What's going on guys? Hopefully it's working. Should be working. We were having some issues with the camera, so. And it's only up here, if you guys remember from us doing lives a long time ago yeah. for cook-along. But downstairs when we do lives, we never have an issue, so. We're doing a cook-along. And I thought this would be fun since everyone's quarantined. I don't even know if I can say that word and what? have the stream monetized. Wait, you thought it would be fun or I thought it would be you fun? You thought it would be fun. Um, but you guys decided what we're going to make today. So savory instead of sweet, which I was surprised. Um, so we're making a breakfast casserole. Hopefully you guys are ready to do that or making whatever you want and just cooking or just watching because we're going to answer questions. We'll just hang out. Um, and Mega standing up. She said she's a workhorse. Well, I'm always the one cooking and working and I got a pan heating in the back. So I'm going to get going since we're a little late to the game. Theo's sleeping. This is perfect. So... It's a simple casserole, broccoli, cheese, bacon, and eggs. So I'm gonna chop up my broccoli here and get that going in a pan. There's already some ghee in the pan. I would normally chop up the bacon and then like cook the bacon and then add the uh, broccoli because there's already fat coming off of it. But we're using turkey bacon since we don't have other bacon. Yeah. And it's I'm pretty sure it's cooked and it's not gonna give off any fat. So I'll- Is it cooked? So I'll slice that up after I get the broccoli going and then add that in as well. Um, I don't know if this is cooked. You don't think so? I'm not sure about that. What, does anyone know, is turkey bacon cooked? I think some of them are, but this one feels like it might not be. I'm sure someone will tell us. How's everything going, guys? Hopefully everyone's still got a job, family's healthy, all that type of stuff. Yeah. I know times are tough. Um, and they might be for a while. Yeah. Please do more of these. Yeah, maybe we'll try doing one for a week for the next little Couple while. Couple weeks, yeah. yeah. While we're all home. You, do you mind stock? No. Okay, I like stock. It's hearty. Will your son eat keto? Um, no, he's not going to be like a keto baby, but he'll eat keto because keto is also like healthy foods. So I don't think it's good to have your baby be keto when introducing baby foods or else we would be doing that. Yeah. So we're, what we're doing is just like, I'll grab the book in a second, but basically like Weston A. Price principles of introducing foods to your baby. So focusing on like mostly keto foods since keto foods tend to be the most nutrient dense. So like we did bone broth. We, I tried making a liver pate. Getting a broccoli in the pan. It's over like medium high heat. But he didn't really like the liver pate. Um, we did bone broth. He likes steak. He loves steak, chicken, pork. He's eaten all of those. And then we also did sweet potatoes, avocados, carrots. Apples. And apples. And the one out of those he liked the best is probably carrots. We did today for the first time. He hates apples. He hates apples the most, which I'm, I was surprised about that. Um, Dr. Glow says this is not cooked. Oh. A lot of people working from home. I'm not a big fan of broccoli, someone says. I'm not either, but Matt loves it, and it, it's good in a casserole. Yeah, I used to love, just like always, I've loved broccoli. Should I do all of it? How much? We're going to do eight eggs worth? Yeah. Maybe do half, or like a little over half. So this is a really- Four slices. Yeah, this is a recipe we make all the time. We just use different ingredients. We'll use like sausage, normal bacon, sometimes even ground beef. Chorizo is really good. We had chorizo yesterday for breakfast. And then some kind of veggie. Sometimes we do tomatoes, broccoli. What else do we do? Onions. Spinach sometimes. Rarely now. So also, um, we thought it'd be fun since a lot of families are home, cooking a lot, not a lot of takeout. So. If you use the hashtag Keto Connect Kids um, and you share you and your kids cooking, so like we'll we'll definitely use it uh, use it with Theo. We'll share you on our story, and you know it'll just be fun. Everyone gets their families involved. Okay, I'm gonna add this bacon to the pan as well with the broccoli. I'm having a little zevia too, black cherry. Someone says, baby is on keto right now. All it has is animal products. Okay, so the thing is, if your baby's breastfeeding, it's not on keto. It's getting most of its um, calories from, is it most of its calories from carbs? 
Yeah. Is breast milk most calorie? I think most calories from breast milk are carbs. Um, it's maybe like 30 to 40 percent carbs, I think. Broccoli is evil. It breaks into little sporlets and defiles your whole plate. That's, That's true. true. Uh, all the mayos, even the ones branded as avocado or olive oil, have soybean as second or third ingredient. I won't make my own too lazy. Knowing that, please recommend the best off-the-shelf alternative. Primal Kitchen. Primal Kitchen. Do we have that in here? We do. Michael will grab it in a second. Primal Kitchen, she says. $2 donation from Heather, Heather McNevin. Thank you. Not allowed to cook. What did you say you're drinking? It's a, it's a diet soda, but it's called Zevia. So it's um, sweetened with stevia as opposed to artificial sweeteners. Yeah, but babies and kids stay in ketosis better than adults. Um, I think that's true just because they're burning so many calories. I haven't poked no. Theo with a needle yet though, but it would be cool to test his ketones. Should we do it? He'd cry. We had to get his blood drawn when he was, how old, like a week? Yeah. It was a very painful experience. This is dramatic. This is the mayo. It is ridiculously expensive though, right? Um, you can get it on sale. I often find it on sale and then I st uh, rack up. Is that the word, rack up? Stock up. Stock up. Uh, but yeah, it's eight ninety nine. dollars uh, Have you a cookbook for sale or download? We do. We have two of them, and Amazon's going to be the cheapest place to get both of those. So let me just see. Oh, this is on screen a little bit. Dang it. What is oh, that? So this is our website, guys. And if you can see, around our frame in frame picture, I have a little template thing we made, which looks cool. It says Keto Connect. So this is our website, ketoconnect.net. If you scroll down, these are all our cookbooks. So we have two, it says right here, paperback, you can notice there. The other ones are eBooks, and we have a fourth eBook on the way. So this is the most popular one, the Fat Bomb Bible. This is another really good one, and then this is a slow cooker one. I this think is, the fourth one will be our most popular. Fourth one is gonna be desserts. And I also have a cool shot I set up Oh man, that's not working. Okay, I'll fix that in a second. This is so complicated, this streaming business. So I'm adding salt, pepper, onion, and some garlic to the bacon and broccoli. She's adding salt, pepper, onion, garlic to the bacon and broccoli. Powders. $8.99 WTF? Yeah guys, you gotta understand the most of the stuff people buy from the grocery store, it's using industrial waste products as the main ingredient, soybean oil, sugar. It's like not expensive ingredients. So then when you buy something like the avocado oil mayonnaise, that's actually made from quality ingredients. It costs a lot more. So if you come from that frame of reference, yeah, it's really expensive. Uh, make your own mayo. Have we made our own mayo? Yeah, we have. We've made it a couple times. I'm not big on mayo. I never eat it. I have muscular dystrophy, so I have a hard time doing keto. Mostly protein drinks. Huh. You have a hard time consuming them? She has a hard time doing keto, so she mostly has protein drinks. I don't know necessarily what you're supposed to do for muscular dystrophy. I mean, it's just, is that just like rapid muscle loss? Same Human thing. breast milk is less than 7% carbs? That is not That's true. That's false, yeah. Where are you getting that information from? Let okay. me grab a book real quick. Okay, and as far as the casserole goes, it's basically about to be put together. Um, the bacon and the broccoli is being cooked down. Again, I did onion powder, scarlet powder, salt and pepper, super easy. And now I have a casserole dish here. Um, Matthew Newbold, if you're watching, thank you for this casserole dish. We still have to get it back to you. I am going to spray it with some ghee spray that we have so it comes out. Eggs just stick just to anything. So, do you remember where in this book was the chart with the nutrition? Was it like near the front, near the back? Is that the right one? Yeah. Oh, um, 
I don't remember. Trying to find it. Okay. You have to occupy them while I find this. I know, I'm telling them about the casserole. Okay, so I sprayed the casserole dish and I'm going to add the eggs and bacon. Or yeah, the eggs and bacon, which I'm about to pull off the stove here. I will bring that over to show you. Um, Sir Kensington is at Costco. Oh yeah, Sir Kensington. I've looked at Sir Kensington before and all of them, I, I haven't seen one that just uses avocado or coconut oil, um, but maybe. And then there's chosen foods as well. I've seen that at Costco, nowhere else. Okay, so for 36 ounces, there, here's a chart in the book. You guys can probably see this if I hold it up. This is the chart of breast milk nutrition right there. Micros and macros. So you're making up the 7% thing. For a seven, uh, no, for 36 ounces, 766 calories worth uh, 76 grams of carbs. So if we do math, 76 times four, um, then divide that by 766. 39%, 39.6% of calories in breast milk is carbs. You're out your mind. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, where are you getting your information from? I got it from Siri. Ask her. Uh. Yeah, you need to look it up for more than one source. So I'm getting it from this book right here. Okay. So I'm going to slice up this cheese. So this is some... Uh, pep it's like pepper jack, but it's like a raw cheese that we got from the farm and I just pulled out a big block of it So I'm gonna slice oh, this up. You gotta tell me I gotta fix the cooking shot They can I still got, see it. But I got yeah. a new shot set up here Get it going Can they still see what I'm doing? And then if you guys are cooking all our casseroles, we do um, 350 15 to 20 minutes um, depending on how many ingredients depending on the size of the dish, but this will probably be like 15, closer to 15, um, 20 at a 350 degree oven in one. I really went all out for this stream, guys. I'm setting up new shots. Okay, so we got our cheese going right here. Cheese pile. Is it going? The shot? Yeah, Okay. shot's going. And so... Now we're gonna do eight eggs, sometimes we do 10, depends. So I'm just gonna crack all eight eggs in here. You can crack them in a bowl and whisk them, add some heavy cream if you want to like make it thicker and fluffier and more voluminous. But we're just gonna crack our eggs in here and then like break the yolks, make it look a little artsy. That's what Matt likes to do. Okay, Prey Suze, I'm starting to think you're just not a very intelligent person because- So mean. I'm, I'm giving you the breakdown as a percentage. So no, the baby doesn't drink 36 ounces of milk per sitting. But, in a day it could. But no, yeah, per sitting. It doesn't drink 36 ounces. No. But still, each serving, say it's two ounces, they're still getting 40% of their calories from carbs. It's, it's just like, yeah, it's just basic, basic common sense math going on there. Um, depends on whether the breast milk came from grass-fed humans or not. That's true, although I don't think the diet of the human changes the macros of the breast milk, it changes the micros, yeah. from what I've read. You see the shot? Oh yeah, is it even that good? It's not great, but it's pretty good. Are you gonna mix the eggs in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we make this all the time. But not usually turkey bacon. I feel like it won't be as like salty and tasty, but Keisha's, look how long that egg is. Egg is. That is a long egg. Quiches are really good. They usually only have an average of four eggs. Yeah. Yeah. The thing with quiches the, are cream heavy. And they usually have a crust, right? No, no that's, you can make crustless, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna break up these yolks here. What program do you use for your live stream? We use uh, Streamlabs. OBS, OBS Streamlabs. Hi, 
Hi from Reno, Nevada. Hello. We went on vacation there once to a Grand Rapids hotel or something for a gambling. It was fun. To where? Reno. Oh yeah. What was the name of that? Grand Sierra Resort. No. Was that it? Yeah. And they had a Furby convention there at the time? Furry. Furby. Furry. Furry. Okay. So we're all mixed up here. So I'm going to salt and pepper this a little more and then we're going to top the cheese. Yeah, it was fun. We were actually playing blackjack with a bunch of furries. Not in costume though. They were out of costume. I think maybe they just had like their bottom costume on. With they those. did. Yeah. It was really fun. They're how, a fun group of people. How many servings is this for both of us? I will eat, we'll usually finish this for a meal. Yeah. I'll eat like a little over half. So I'll eat like five eggs worth. And I'll eat the rest. Which this is pretty um, like not very calorie dense. No, it's so not. If I have that whole amount, it might only be like 700 calories. But it's not a lot of fat also, especially with the turkey bacon. Yeah. I did cook everything in some fat though. We did not cut enough cheese. Adriana Price is verified. She said Furby. I don't think we've ever had a verified person in chat. Oh, then there's a check next to it. That's what it looks like. Hi, Adrian cool. Price. <laughs> uh, furby better. convention would be fun, though. I would definitely go to one. But furry, I would go to that, too. It was fun. Okay, so our casserole is done here, if you want to change the angle. Oh, yeah. Hello? Um... I'm gonna bake it 350 for, we'll start at 15, we'll see where we're at. Maybe it'll be done by then. All right, tell me what you guys are making too and what you're putting in the oven. A couple people are cooking along. Are you making uh, egg casserole? That's so fun. What kind of cheese did we put? It's um, a specific type of cheese we get from the local farm, but it's like a pepper jack, spicier than a pepper jack, right? It's called Desert Storm. Mm, it's one of my faves. Okay, here we go. Blackjack and furry seems like an advantage. A what? Does it? Um, if it's a girl, they name her Charmin. <laughs> That's funny, because of the epidemic. See, I can't even say a lot of words. It's actually getting scary, guys. Not to be preachy, but like, the amount, like, face, our YouTube scans videos, the voice, the, the words you say in videos, and they can demonetize based on you saying specific words. It's like, we're getting into the dystopian future we all thought was possible. We've all been reading about and enjoying so thoroughly. Yeah. I made shrimp -o shrimp stuff, that sounds good. Making risotto. Oh, our risotto, that, yeah. that's a really good recipe. Um, coconut yogurt, air fried pork chops, our dinner tonight, yes, those are good. Anything with the air fryer is just great. You know what I was thinking would be fun, guys, while we wait for this to bake? What? Doing a Sporkle. You remember Sporkle? No. A Sporkle nutrition quiz. Okay. I don't know what that means. You, you, like in Sporkle, they have ones where it's I don't like, know what Sporkle is. It's just quizzes that are made okay. online, like trivia stuff. So. Let's do it. I thought it'd be fun. We can do it as a collective here. Wait. So the ones with the most plays are cereals, but... I you guess I, I know cereal. my cereal, probably, right? Yeah. Okay, let's play. Centrum tablets is second, but we need to see the chat. Pop out chat. Oh, yeah. Okay, ready, guys? This is going to be fun. Oh, this will be fun. Can you name the world's most highly produced crops? And you only have three minutes. And cereal. I think I have to type somewhere. Play quiz. Cereal crops. Corn, wheat. Yeah. So it's corn, wheat, and soy for sure. Does, does soy not count? No. Um, crops, guys. Crops. I feel like sorghum is kind of high. Yeah. Buckwheat. Yeah. Rice, like just rice. Rice, yeah, of course. What else? Another big one we're missing. What do you guys got? Corn, corn. Uh, corn, rice. There, you guys are lagging a little behind us, I think. <laughs> Um, like quinoa, does that count? I don't, I don't know think, how you spell that. I don't think that would work. That is is well. that how you spell it? Yeah. Soy, corn, rice, wheat. Did you put soy? Cotton? That's, no, that's not. Oats. Cereal grain, yeah, oatmeal. 
oats. There's another big one. We said soy. Uh. <laughs> Everyone's commenting now. Sugar? No, that's not a cereal grain. Cereal crop. Cereal crop. Like Faro, isn't that it's a brand? Thing? What's brand? Brand. Barley. Barley. Barley is a good one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Nice job. Who was that? Matthew Newbold. Thank you. Don't be looking this up online. Millet. That sounds good. People are definitely looking it up. But if you get give us an answer, we will shout you out. Who said millet? Millet was uh, Amy S. Thank you, Amy. Hops. Sounds right. No barley. Did we say we did barley? barley? Yeah. Yeah, these last ones are kind of obscure. Wow, buckwheat only two million. Hmm. Uh, bran, barley. I think these are gonna be like. I can't really... even pull out my cereal boxes because we don't have it. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get these. Oh. Cereal grains. Look, he just rolled over. Dale's been rolling over in his. I just started a keto YouTube channel. Any underrated tips? Underrated? Why are all the comments grain words, someone said. <laughs> yeah. Rye. Rye, yes. Oh. Come on. Come on. One more. K-A-M-U-T. I don't know what that is. That's just... not anything, is it? No, it's not. Just put sugar, see what that means. It's not sugar. Sugar's not a cereal grain. It would be the number one thing. Flax. Flax. Triticale. I've never heard of that. Me neither. Okay, not bad. Why are all the comments cereal grain words? Oh, do you have any comments for our new YouTube channel? Underrated comments for our new YouTube channel. I think it's mostly about consistency, bringing something new to the table, because everyone's kind of done everything. Because when we started, keto wasn't really that popular even. Yeah. You know, now it's really popular. So more competition, there's people with like bigger budgets making more, uh, just like lots of videos. Also, is it just one of you? Is it two of you? I don't know. I don't it's have- It's tough. Because I guess it's one thing if you just want to have a YouTube channel where um, you have fun and you like share your journey and stuff like that or it's another thing if you want to eventually have that become like your sole source of income that's tough um, especially just off YouTube like we have the food blog this food blog ketoconnect.net that's like the major source of our income so we don't rely on YouTube solely but YouTube helps us build our website I just turned the temp up on the oven to 375 just because I felt like making it cook longer, I mean quicker. So just as a heads up, but you can keep it at 350. Um... New YouTube channel, why? Apparently there was some poll of kids in elementary and middle school and the number one thing they wanted to be was YouTubers. YouTubers. Just come on guys. I think, but I think the reason why is because it seems like it's so easy. And you don't have to do a lot of work and you make a lot of money. They think you make a lot of money. But too. that's what I thought about Dave and Ava. Remember you were like, this is so yeah. there's a, <laughs> there's a YouTube channel, Dave and Ava and has like how many 10 million subscribers? I think like four, four, but they make so much money and Theo loves it. And so we watch it quite a bit. And I was like, this is so easy. They just, cause they take all the typical songs like wheels on the bus nursery rhymes nursery rhymes and they just turn it into other songs so it was like the cows in the grass go moo 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 and i was like yeah. you're just cheating but he was the man was like but the animation like they have to like they have a team of animators yeah and i was like oh, yeah. they're just making so much money just making fake nursery rhymes uh let's see what sauce would that would you include with avocado fries? I would probably make like a spicy mayo sauce. Um, you could just mix like sriracha and mayo. That would be tasty. That would also like up the fat a ton more. Um, anything you could really do. You could do like an Asian sauce. What are your thoughts on vital wheat gluten? It does have a bit of carbs, but it helps with structure so much on keto baked goods. I feel the trade-off is worth it. 
Yeah, it depends if you have some kind of gluten allergy or intolerance. So if you don't, then yeah, it's like high protein. It's pretty low carb. Um, it's just, it's gluten, which a lot of people doing keto like to avoid. But if you don't want to avoid it, then yeah, it's, it makes for a lot better bread for sure. Okay. Could you add it for 10 minutes? 10 minutes? Five, I'll make it quick. Okay, Mega's feeding Theo, I guess. Oh boy, a lot of pressure here. Look at Emma Chamberlain. She talks about nothing, but she's funny AF. And is now a millionaire at 18. So what kid wouldn't want to have a YouTube channel? She must be really funny though, right? That's, that's tough. I mean, not everyone's funny. Emma Chamberlain? Oh, she has almost 10 million subscribers. Yeah. Okay. She makes a lot of money then. What are your current fitness goals? I don't really have a goal. It's mostly just stay in good shape as I get older because I really am feeling like a dad lately. So um, I'm not too worried about aesthetics, but more so like power lifting. I tried, I've only been lifting like two or three days a week. So a little bit less than typical. Can we do another quiz? That was fun. Yeah, I guess that will take the pressure off me. Let's do another quiz. What do you guys want to do? These are all the options. Let me know what, what you guys fancy. Top 10 pistachio countries? <laughs> Fibrous fruits, nutrition. I think something more like actual nutrition would be cool. Let me know whatever gets a couple votes in chat. She's even a Louis Vuitton model now and went to Paris Fashion Week. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's cool to see the people that start on YouTube and then they end up making it big time. Being funny, that leaves me out. <laughs> yeah. Tessame Mayo? I'm not familiar with that. Let me look it up. Tesame organic mayonnaise. So ingredients, okay, so it's not bad. It's not my preference. So this here, high oleic sunflower oil is, I don't know how they make this. I haven't looked into it enough, but it's sunflower oil, which is low in omega-6, because typically sunflower oil is really high in omega-6. So you kind of want to not have tons of it. I don't know how it's made. I would look into that a little bit more, but this is better than the mayos, like the cheap stuff like Hellman's and Dukes and stuff like that with soybean oil, but it's not as good as Primal Kitchen in my opinion. How much sugar? Oh, is that one on here? Where is how much sugar? How much sugar? Okay, we're doing it. Can you guess how much sugar is in the foods given? This will be good. How much sugar is in orange juice? Well, it doesn't give you the serving size. I'm assuming a cup. This is a bad quiz. What do you guys think? This is, uh, this is a dumb question. I guess like, I would say nine. Sir Kensington's avocado oil mayonnaise. Okay, I'll go with nine. Eight. How much sugar is in honey? This is such a bad quiz because it doesn't give you the serving size. This quiz is irrelevant. Because in a tablespoon, I think there's like 18 grams in honey. But this quiz is just poorly made. Okay, this one's no good.
Let's try like uh, Centrum tablets. That's weird. Let's just try nutrition. Or protein matching. No, nutrition. Can you pick the name, the type of food? <laughs> Can you pick the name, the type of food? Made from long strands of amino acids used for growth and repair of cells found in meat, fish, and eggs. Protein. Oh, this is a quick one. Used as a store of energy and as a layer of insulation. Fat? Oops. Tissues repair and resistance to disease found in fresh fruit and veg. I guess vitamin C. Making of bones, teeth, and blood clotting found in dairy products. This is a bad one too. Manufacturing red blood cells. Present in every living cell forms about 70% of our bodies. Yeah, this is a dumb one. We did it. Sir Kensington's Mayo. Some of these add different oils, even though they say avocado oil. Is Sir Kensington's different? Oh, it's sunflower oil. No, that's, that's a classic, avocado oil. Yeah, that looks good. Did you ever try Sir Kensington's uh, no, Mayo? All right. Kraft bought out Primal Kitchen for 200 million. Did you know that? Yeah, I heard that. Was it 200 million? And also Kraft bought, was it Kraft that bought RX Bar for 500 million? I don't know how to feel about that really because they're probably gonna make it worse, but you, at least it seems like, oh, this is buzzing. I think it needs a little longer. Okay. Needs a little longer. How long was it in for? 15. It was in for 15. Yeah, I'm not really proficient on mayonnaise. I never eat it. It's like my least favorite food. If you go off for a while, it can be slow going in weight loss at first. Be patient, just my experience. The one at Costco doesn't have vegetable oil? Oh yeah, there's a Costco brand too. I think it's called like Chosen Foods. Yeah. Mark Sisson has said that he is working with Kraft to make sure they keep the quality standards. How much percent of uh, Primal Kitchen did Mark Sisson own, do you guys think? Did he own, he didn't own 100% of it probably. He must have got a fat check though. Do you guys Google people's net worth a lot? This says Mark Sisson's estimated net worth is one to five million. I think that's, that's low. That has to be low. <laughs> How's the yard coming along? It's coming along pretty well. I trimmed all the trees. There's this weird type of tree in Georgia that you have to trim every year in spring. So I did that. Meg is back. You really did not hold down the fork, right, did you? No, I did not. We did a really bad uh, nutrition quiz. It just asked how much sugar is in each thing. <laughs> and the question was how much sugar is in honey? And it doesn't say how much. And the options were like 70 grams, 80 grams. Um, yeah, so I've tried the Chosen Foods Mayo, I want to say this, the coconut oil version, not good, not good at all. So I would do avocado oil if you're going to do one of those. Yeah, I googled my own net worth before too, and I don't think anything comes up. 
that just like links to Keto Connect. Yeah, it just shows my LinkedIn profile. Um, what else you guys got? This weird tree in Georgia. <laughs> what do you buy weekly for your pantry items? Um, pantry we don't do weekly because uh, yeah. a lot of it lasts so long and when we buy, we buy in bulk. So like our almond flour, coconut flour, flax, whatever we really buy, it's big bags. Because pantry sort of implies you don't need to buy it weekly. Yeah. But and, stuff we buy weekly is like what? Like avocados, berries, meats? A eggs. Eggs. Um, maybe cream? Heavy cream maybe? Yeah. Um, Topo Chico's. We buy in bulk a lot too though, and we freeze it. Yeah, and we get like Topo Chico's or Waters if we like a certain kind, we get like big cases. Hello from Michigan. My net worth is still negative with all my student debt. Yeah. Yep, that's um, a struggle. My dad was telling me though that I think they're, they're allowing everyone to defer or like you don't have to pay for the next two months, which is good. Yeah, should be good. Yeah, it's great. There's going to be some kind of relief coming in here for people, right? Apparently, they were talking of giving everyone like twelve hundred dollars. A thousand. I heard twelve hundred. Oh. Recently, I don't think it's going through though, or something. I, I don't know. I just read random articles. What snacks to buy for the next two weeks? Probably none. I just buy the same stuff as I've always bought, really. I like Quest Chips. I was Those just are about good. to say, Quest Chips is what we regularly get. I got off of Amazon. Um, what else? We eat a lot. Oh, dark chocolate. That's one thing we might even buy weekly, depending. What are you doing? Nothing. Oh. Yes. Um, yeah, dark chocolate and keto bars. We eat regularly. I feel like those, the Quest Chips and dark chocolate are like the two main things, right? Um, yeah, Quest Chips. Quest Chips and chocolate, those are probably my go-tos. Berries too, lately. Yeah, lately frozen. We like, I like to buy um, a lot of berries, especially when they're in season and then we freeze them. 2,400 for a married couple filing jointly. That's a nice check. It comes in a check, or how are we getting this money? Target has four pack of Quest Chips now for $8. That's good. I'm confused about people saying avocado oil has a taste. Avocado oil is basically inert. What does it taste like? Are you maybe not liking the rosemary flavor in it? Avocado oil mayo? Yeah, that has a very different taste than just like canola oil. oil. Yeah, very different taste. It's avocado it's oil wire. has a little bit of a taste to it. Yeah, for sure. Especially when you turn it into mayo. Keto Connect's net worth is $10 million to me. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Cute, Glow. Dr. Glow. I don't care how much people make. Isn't it kind of an interesting thing to find out, though? Yeah. Because that's one piece of the puzzle of getting to know a person, kind of. Like, for me... If I discover someone I really am interested in, I watch interviews, maybe like read books if they've written books, and I'd like to know their net worth. It's just it's, to me is like a piece of the puzzle. Does it come out of our tax refund next year? No, I feel like it's immediate, like we're getting a check or something. It's only for those making under 70k a year, I thought. Oh, I didn't Joshua, hear that. a couple more minutes and then it's done. Make my own mayo in 30 seconds. Three eggs, three cups of olive oil or avocado oil, Dijon so, mustard, apple cider vinegar, pepper, and salt. I guess it is that easy then. It is very easy. Okay, so you have to be under a 75K single, under 150 joint to receive this oh. 1,000 or 1,200 bucks. That's good, that's, yeah. That's encompassing a lot of people. Plus 500 per kid? Can you make DIY mayo for us? Right now? We probably could. We're up against a hard um, exit at 4 p.m. though. And the casserole should be done here in a second. Those sporkle quizzes were really a letdown. I know. What have you guys been doing since you've been stuck at home? Watching any good shows, reading good books? We've been doing both of those. <laughs> 
We have we just started, started Tiger King last night. So good. That's the unraveling of each character's personality. He was like, we need to finish tonight. I was like, not a chance. I got to go to bed. So I guess I don't want to ruin it for you guys, but the characters are initially presented in one way and then they sort of unravel and you're like, oh, I see what's going on here. They're not as innocent as they seem type of a thing. Uh, so that's good. And then I've been reading The Handmaid's Tale, the book. It's one that me and Mega are reading together. It's okay. Pretty good. Show the camera angle, the right one. This is gorgeous. So there it is. It doesn't look as pretty on camera as it is it does in person. No, because I have a filter on that camera. This camera is just a webcam with very bad filters. So here we have it. It's done. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, uh, just cook it until the center is not runny. Yeah, I just eyeball it and you can tell. You could even put it on broil a little bit at the end to get yeah. it more crispy. Percentage of your dark chocolate? Uh, it ranges. So 95 to 88, that's where we usually stay. Stick around. Um, just pull out the ones we go to. I've been having this one lately. And my favorite, and is this is this better than the other one? No, your favorite's still better. Yeah, this is both of our favorites. It's this 88% Choco Love. This is also 88% Matt's been eating. And then this is a good 95%. It's still, I would say, sweet, but without any added sugar. Oh, it's one sugar for half the bar. How do you start a successful food blog? So... It's pretty tough at this point. Here's what I would say. So if you create your food blog, just general food, then you're competing against Bobby Flay, Ina Garden, um, just people like- Pioneer we, woman. We're not good enough chefs to make recipes for just using all foods basically. Yeah. Because you're competing against really good people. So it would be easier though. It would be easier? To make stuff. Yeah. But um, you need more expertise. So if you have like a niche, like a specific diet, like low carb or even gluten free, some people are vegan. That's a big Paleo. thing. Paleo. Paleo. Yeah. Um, it just like whittles down the competition a little bit, and it makes it easier. So that would be the one big tip. Like you can't just make it a general food blog, or you'll fail for sure. That's maybe not. Probably, unless you're really good. You I might mean, anything's not. Anything's possible. <laughs> Um, then second off, you need like to do YouTube, Pinterest, Pinterest, key, all I would those say. things. So I would say overall, like here's our food block. I already showed it to you. Like we're not A appeal design appeal. It's important. Yeah, but like there's people that have better food blocks for sure. Yeah. Um, what we are maybe better at than most people that have food blocks is doing YouTube. So maybe you can find something that you personally excel at and make that a big priority. We also have a podcast and I guess that's the big tip. Like find something that not other people are really doing and be good at that. Yeah, add something, add some sort of value that you're not getting anywhere else. Cause like when we started, um, I was like looking for recipes but nothing really caught my eye. And there so, wasn't a lot. Yeah, so we were just trying to make up our own things and we were like, oh, why not just share what we're doing? And that's what prompted us to do YouTube. Otherwise, we could have just stuck with a food blog and probably not been uh, nearly as successful or known as we are now. Um, my diet went down the drain with this Corona thing. Yeah, um, I, I want to know more about people's reasoning as to that. Is it just because you're home and like it's hard to stay probably. away from the cupboard? Probably a lot of that. Or yeah. are you routine. actually in like a position where you can't get meat and eggs, you know? Could be that too. A little of both probably. Yeah. Do people look at Pinterest anymore? Yeah. I think my mom does a lot. A lot of moms. Yeah, Matt's mom is always she's telling always us about Pinterest. recipes. She never used to be. Now she's always on Pinterest. It's great. I love it because she always makes us stuff. Um, the one I really dislike is Facebook. I went on it the other day for the first time in a couple of years to just like read my Facebook feed, see what everyone's up to type of a thing. And it's, it's, it's a couple things exclusively. It's political hot takes, 
multi-level marketing, like buy my thing, you know, that that's really the only two things you see on there. Or it's like people sharing their kids, which is kind of cute, but it's really, I don't like it. I guess maybe I'm not using it good enough to where I'm like in groups that I am interested in. Yeah. But if you're just scrolling the homepage, I mean, that is terrible. Like, like my dad, <coughs> parents, I think generally, my <coughs> your dad maybe. Yeah. Uh, I think it's because we can't buy the right ingredients, anxiety, reverted to comfort foods, snacking from being home, um, cravings, stressful eating. My spoon loves the bottom of a peanut butter jar these days. Doesn't it always? Mine loves the top and the middle and <laughs> like just all of the layers. So I'm kind of nervous to mention this because I keep wanting to say it, but I'm not going to. But I, maybe should I share about my Patreon? Okay. Yeah. Should I see he sounded nervous too. Yeah. I guess I'm still thinking about it, but um, I have a I have a plan of uh, starting more of a personalized uh, Patreon community for like a small set of people, probably women, because it's going to be a lot of motherhood stuff, a lot of like parent stuff, lots of Theo stuff, uh, lots of just like personal insight stuff. Um, definitely like sit down on like me. Am I being involved in this? Well, you're a part of my life. Okay. And maybe you would join a Q and A once in a while, but like. If I was doing a Q and A, it would just be very like comfortable. So like, if I have to nurse Theo, I would nurse him on camera, and it would just you know it would be like a private community where we can all share and talk. Mostly as for women. Women, yeah. As we transition, for me, transitioning is a big part right now, and I I realize that we're all always transitioning is the thing, and finding a place where you can get the support and share and get advice um, for me is pretty crucial. Um, and I know we have a platform already, but. I don't know. I, I'm a human being. I don't want to be judged. I feel like I can't just share openly and as authentically on our Keto Connect social media. Um, yeah, you can't. Yeah. So that's why I thought it'd be nice for me to start something up. And that's what I'm thinking. If you guys are interested, let me know. If you're not, also let me know. Um, I'm probably going to do it regardless. <laughs> what? A lot of funny zingers in here, guys. Uh, Whole Foods is out of all meat this morning except the $22.99 per pound step five where the cow lives in somebody's house. <laughs> Dr. Glow. We get it. Uh, and then this one I like. I stole 60 eggs from the restaurant I work at on the day before we were ordered to close. I walked past the owner and said, I'm taking these. <laughs> and he nodded. That's hilarious. I guess that's not really stealing. I'm but taking these. I love that. I need social distancing from my fridge. Yeah, don't we all? I ordered some uh, keto type snacks from an online store as I live somewhere I can't get things. That's great. Should we cut into it? Yeah. You want to be the cutter? I thought you were a workhorse. Should I just cut, like, give you two thirds and give me one third? Is that even? How does that equal well, I'll up? I'll just cut, like, six pieces or something, you know. A lot of people say they like that, Mega. Yeah, I think the main thing probably with being at home is it really, it really throws off your routine. So like, if you have your routine where you eat lunch at work and then you come home, there's just like willpower built into that. But when you're just stuck at home all day, the fridge is calling your name constantly. Fortunately for us, it's what we do anyway. So our routine hasn't changed. Um, but yeah, it would be really, I feel like if me and you worked out of home and all of a sudden we were put in a position where we can work from home together, uh -huh. we would be like snack fast. I'd be baking all the time. We'd be cooking up stuff. Yeah. We'd probably be doing more takeout too. It takes a few days to, to, of like doing that, just going totally off the rails before you start feeling bad. And you're like, I haven't done anything for four days. Yeah. So if that happens, let it happen and then just get back, you know, don't let it happen for like a week though. If possible. We only got four minutes left. Live from the kitchen like good old times. Woo! Any blondie recipes in the works? Um, we do have a blondie recipe, a skillet blondie on our site. It's a little complex. Maybe we could do a better one. It's not too complex. It's just, don't you brown the butter first? Is that the big thing? I don't know. Look it up. Yeah, pull it up right there. Uh, bup, bup, bup. Skillet Blondie. So do you want how many pieces? A 
I'll just oh, I guess that was... Yeah, I'll just start with three. And then if you want more. How did your guys come out at home? What's your guys' opinion on palm oil and peanut butters compared to hydrogenated oils better or just as bad? Much better. So palm oil is 100% saturated fat, meaning it doesn't really, it's like very sturdy. It's not really at risk to be oxidized the way that polyunsaturated fats are. So the main thing is palm oil is really bad for the environment. They're like tearing down rainforests, you know, that type of thing. So that's why people like to avoid it. But it's essentially the same nutrition as coconut oil. What about red velvet cake, LOL? <laughs> nice callback. We do have red velvet cupcakes and they are phenomenal. So make those, pull those up. Oh, there was uh, there was this one guy, do you remember his name? He kept like constantly Michael talking. Michael Beach. Michael Beach, he constantly asked for red velvet cake recipe. And we're gonna be doing some interviews this week too guys with um, like nutrition interviews, sort of podcast style, but live. So stay tuned for that. I went from 230. Did you pull up our red velvet cupcakes? No. I went from 230 to 150. Gaming and giving up Mountain Dew for a month. Keeps your mind off hunger. What games you were playing? For a month you lost that much weight? Oh, that is a lot in a month. 80 pounds? In a month? No, he gave up Mountain Dew for a month, but maybe the weight loss was over a longer time. What am I looking huh. for? Red velvet? Cupcakes, yeah. And guys, the search bar on our site actually works really well now. So you can search for recipes on there. Scroll down to the recipe. Let them check it out. So the only thing is you can opt out the red dye. That's what makes it red. But yeah. And then we have the frosting recipe. It's a pretty straightforward recipe. It's super good. Um, you can leave out. Yeah, I would just make those for sure. Are you going to try it? Yeah. What are you guys making for dinner tonight? Do we have a podcast on epilepsy? We do not. Epilepsy. $10 donation from Arlene SG. Thank you. Number one fan emoji. Hi. Need more recipes with golden flaxseed meal. My favorite is the high fiber muffins on our website. Mine is probably the cinnamon rolls. <laughs> oh, I forgot about those. Can you type in flaxseed meal and see what everything pops Let's up? See. I don't know if it works like that. Flax. Yes. No, oh, kind of. No, not really. Those pop up though. Skip dinner, someone says. I never skip dinner. Once in a while. A little fun Usually the only reason I skip dinner is when I have a cascade of snacks from lunch onward. And then at like 4 p.m. I'm like, I don't need dinner. Okay, um, I'm going to go in. Got a cheesy broccoli bite. Here's a cinnamon rolls recipe. Yeah, if you guys haven't been on the website, I feel like a lot of you haven't. We do put a lot of work into this. We have, uh, we have grocery guides. Hello. Hi. All those. Yeah. We have restaurant guides. All those. We even have a downloadable, um, what is it called? Restaurant low carb options. Yeah. Got a lot of stuff on here, guys. Explore the website a little. This is one we've been going to a lot lately, <laughs> Smoothie King, $5, $5 Friday. Friday. It's really good. We have videos embedded in the site too. In yeah. the page. All right. That's, That's going to do it. Have to tend to our child. Go to the comments. Oh, okay. One last time. How hopefully everyone enjoyed this. Do you want us to do another one? I'm making Big Mac meatloaf. It smells so good. Oh my God, that sounds so good. Dr. Glow's using her $23 ground beef from cows that got to chill in someone's living room for dinner tonight. Can we start a carnivore diet channel? Those exist. And we're not carnivore. We wouldn't start a new channel if we were, but no. I used to work at Smoothie King. Lucky you, but I guess not because you missed out. All right, guys. <laughs> do you do it. all your own Photoshop and stuff? Yes. 90% I would say we do have one person who does some graphics for us now, but I do all the video editing for the first three years. I did all the Photoshop. My God, it's a podcast. I do podcast. I still do that. I write all the posts. 
All right, guys, that's going to do it. Thanks for hanging out. We'll probably be back tomorrow with either an interview or something. Some hangout, but probably an interview, hopefully. <laughs> if you have any recs, let us know. See ya. Bye.